you're watching this video and your husband is somewhere around you or he's watching it with you or you're a man and you're watching this video I suggest you click out okay this is women's meeting this is sister to sister okay we have some secrets to spill here and we don't want you to listen to it okay <laughs> have they gone all right all right let's talk okay um yeah so i was doing my makeup actually but i decided to just talk with you guys while i do the rest of my makeup i've done my foundation and concealer and all of that i use the debbie luster um foundation i showed you guys anyway i use the debbie luster foundation in deep and you know my normal makeup anyway like i was testing out the foundation anyway um yeah so time to do my brows and other thing other things so um this talk is basically um a talk i kind of had at the royal ball i started it you know but because i was trying to rush i feel like i did not really say some of the things i really wanted to say i was trying to summarize and you know hit up all the points at the same time that you know i like to talk i like to explain things very well so i feel like i didn't really have time to explain very well some things or talk about some things so let's talk about them in today's video okay so i titled the talk that day um the secret to happiness which basically i don't know if that's an appropriate title but yeah it's kind of like let me just put on this one yeah so i was hot and i had to put on the fan so if you're hearing any background sounds it's the fan um i titled it the secret to happiness and i don't know if that's an appropriate title but basically yeah the secret to happiness as a woman okay and i started by talking about how you know when i was raising kids i don't know why i keep saying when i was raising kids like i was not still raising kids but when my kids were younger especially when i had cora then and you know maybe even ava yeah i think after cora and ava I wasn't really used to how babies operate, right? It's not like I didn't know how babies operate, but you know how it, 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 it takes a lot of, you know, uh, it takes you spending so much time with kids for you to recognize some patterns and adjust, okay? But that time I just had a new child, you know, I didn't really know some things. So for instance, when I, you know, keep a, when I finish drinking water, like with a glass cup and I keep the glass cup on the table, I'll feel like, you know, my, crawling child cannot reach it or my toddler who is toddling might not really reach it or might not really go there. I mean, well, what is she going there to look for? I just, I didn't even think this deeply about it. In fact, I just put cup where I keep cup like a normal human being on a normal day. And then my child will maybe go there. A child that you think that their hand cannot reach, their hand will reach by force. Okay. The child will go there and maybe push the cup down, break the cup. And I will be so mad. I'll be like, why is this child go there? Why did you go there? And my husband would be like, when I'm angry, he'll come and meet me and say, eh, what did you do to contribute to the situation? And I'll be like, what do you mean? What kind of talk is that one? Like, I beg, leave me alone, George. This one, that one, that one. Like, I'll start getting even more pissed. I'll be talking and this man will tell me, yeah, but what did you do to contribute to the situation? Why are you shouting? Why are you ang getting angry? When you clearly dropped the cup there, knowing that you have kids around, you know? And I'll be like, eh, eh, so I should not live my life because I have children. I should not live my life because I have children. I'll be, I should not drink water and drop cup, basically, <laughs> because I have children. After a while, after a while of, you know, hearing this over and over again, I think it began to sink deep. It began to really, like, I began to get the message that, see, eh, you need to control what you can control, Okay. Yes, there are things that are beyond our control. I think I said this that day. There are things that are beyond our control. There are things that, you know, we, we are basically not within our sphere of control, basically. It's things that, you know, other people, nature, God, you know, all those kind of things. Just leave them for God, right? But the things that are within your control as a human being, recognize those things and control them or else they're going to control you and you're going to be sad you're going to be unhappy you're always going to be feeling like a, like a victim you're always going to be feeling like the world is against you everything you guys i'm not feeling too well though i don't know i'm not sounding well even in my ears i sound somehow but yeah you're always going to be feeling like the world 
is, you know, my own is different, or why is my own different? Why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. You know, why did that person say that to me? Why didn't I get that job? Why didn't I do this one? Why is my husband treating me this way? Why is my wife treating me this way? You know, you're going to always be a victim. Actually, I'm talking about women right now. You're always going to be a victim. And somehow, the narrative that we are being taught now, the narrative that, you know, feminism and all, and all those, you know, champions, are, are teaching young girls these days now is that you are a victim, you know, the world is, is ag men are against you, the world is against you, you are disadvantaged as a woman, so you need to work twice as hard, you need to fight twice as hard, you need to always be, you know, on guard, you need to, I'm not saying that, you know, as a woman we don't have some disadvantages, but men also have disadvantages, right? But they are not being groomed or or raised to believe that those disadvantages are as significant as women are being groomed and raised to think that their disadvantages are, okay? I hope that English makes sense. My ears are ringing. Understand it if you understand it, okay? <laughs> but yeah, um, we, all have we all have disadvantages, but it's not as significant in our lives or in how our lives are going to turn out as we try to make it seem, okay? The most important thing that is going to affect your life is you. The most important person that's going to affect the outcome of your life is you. Okay, so let's let's go of that. I'm supposed to do makeup. That's why I did foundation before. So let's let's go of that mentality or that mindset that you know. I've seen grown men and grown women who every time you talk to them, they are lamenting about one person or the other, one thing or the other, how their father did not do this one for them, their mother did not do that one for them, their sister did not, I'm just like, sister rest. Sister rest, you can't do for somebody, all fingers are not equal, must your own be the shortest, I can't remember who said that thing, and it's so funny and so true. Yeah, all fingers are not equal, but must your own be the shortest? Yes, God places people in people's lives to help other people. Why is it only you that, that they're placing people in your life to help? Why are they not placing you in other people's lives to help them? Why? Why is it only you? Why are you the only, the only one that needs everybody's help? Why are you the only one that nobody is there for? Did everybody abandoned me? How many people were you there for? How many people did you, did you, um, you know, show up for in, time, in, their, in their time of need? How many? You know, so these are the things that we need to really really think about as human beings when we are you know making some decisions in life or when we are saying some things in life because i'm just like see sister you can't you can't blame the whole world you have to you have to blame yourself okay you know there's some things that you know that you can't change right for instance if it comes to the cop situation i know that I can't change my daughter, my child from being a child like you can't you, you just can't okay you have to break that child to stop that child from being a child and it's not it's not what i'm trying to do okay i'm not trying to break my child you know so you know that these are things a child will always be a child that's just it okay a child will always be a child why do we want to punish children for being children right even the bible says foolishness abounds in the heart of a child so we know these things so you as the adult you need to take responsibility for things that happen in your life when you have children or happen with your kids when you have children so the same thing goes for you know, your life in general. Again, this thing is two-sided, okay? And I remember saying, you know, it's, it's double-sided. As much as, you know, we're talking about the negatives now, like take charge of your life, when negative things come to your life, it's not about what happens to you, it's about how you respond, okay? Like, if you're, um, what do they call it? Is it external locus of influence? I bet external locus of waiting, waiting, waiting. External locus of influence. I think that's the word. I'll look for it on Google. Let me just look for it, okay? <laughs> So, if you have an external locus of control, you are likely, you will likely believe that what happens to you is the result of luck or fate or is determined by people in authority, okay, or by, you know, everybody else, things outside of you, things beyond your control, you, you will tend to attribute anything that happens in your life, both good and bad, to things that happen outside of your control, right? But if you have an internal locus of control, you tend to, you know, internalize things and see yourself as, you know, the architect of your own future. So when you have an internal locus of control, you tend to look inwards, you tend to feel like, okay, what part did I play in my life, turning out the way it's turning out in the things that come towards me, in the people that I choose to be friends with, in the people I choose to be in relationship with, okay? And this brings me to another conversation, which is almost like the main conversation, right? 
the other day when I was in Abuja, I was talking with someone, we went out, right? And we we're just gisting about, you know, how some women suffer in their marriages and how some men are like literal enemies of progress. It's almost like they're the devils in their wife's life, right? I used to ask myself sometimes, like, is it that some men just go and look for their enemies and marry? Like, how do you hate your wife so much that after marrying her, you know, you now turn to the devil in her life. You're not the inhibiting factor. You're not the, ah, uh ah. -uh. You're not the principalities and powers that she should be praying against. Like, what the hell? Because we, you know, most of us, they were married and we were all hanging out, you know, it was even in the evening, you know, it was even in Abuja trip that me and Nelo just went on. Like, we didn't have to, I didn't need to tell my husband more than three times about the trip, you know. And that's one, that's one thing about my husband. When it comes to me going out or me going on trips, he doesn't have a problem with it. He doesn't even, he's always, always, you know, if he's not around, you know, how are the children going to cope, right? If he's around, no problem. But if he's not around, okay, where will the children stay? What would they do? Blah, 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 blah. And that trip, because I, I, Nelo was not around and I didn't really think things through, um, he actually paid our flight ticket. So I went with my kids on the trip, right? Just so that they would be fine because he wasn't going to be around, you know. But if he's around, he just takes over. It's not like he's, it has never been an issue of, ah, you cannot travel or where are you going to? No. In fact, it's me that is to over explain where I'm going to because I just feel like, oh, guy, you didn't ask too many questions. Let me give you all the information. And him is like, okay, whatever, you know? So some of them, some of them I mean, Nelo's husband too is like that, you know? So basically, you know, we're all, they, were, they were now talking and saying, oh, we're so lucky that our husbands are this way, right? And yeah. I've, I get that, right? I get that talk of, oh, you're so lucky that your husband is like this. But recently, I've been trying to, you know, enlighten people, or not just enlighten people, but, you know, like to kick against that talk somehow of, oh, you're so lucky. Because if you think about it, I keep asking myself, is it really luck? Like, is it really, really, really luck that you get a good husband? Yes, there is blessings of God in it. You know, God blessed you with a good man, right? But it wasn't like you were just... How would I put it? It's not so random, right, that you get a good man. It's not so random that you get a bad man either. It is not so random. You have a part to play. And I, and I said it that nice, right? I was telling my friend then that, yes, it's okay to say that we're lucky, but if you really think about it, there are things about you, there are things that you did, there are things about your upbringing, your mentality, your mindset, your personality, your character, your, you know, um, conscious behavior, there are things about you that unconsciously made you choose a good man, right? Because we, we all, I mean, all of us are fine girls now. We did not marry the first man that came to meet us, all of us that were on that table, right? All of us have had previous relationships that maybe either they broke off or we broke off, but basically we've had relationships before that did not work out for us until we now found these good men that were not, no, it's not good men, these good men, please. I don't know why I did that air quotes. But until we now found these good men that we now ended up with, right? So it is not totally such a coincidence or such a lucky exp oh, what this thing is pigmented though. So you're not, it's not such a lucky experience, you know? It is more like things in your life led you to that. Things in your life led you to choose the man that you chose. So, every time I hear that, oh, a woman is having marital issues, her husband is the devil, he's this, he's that, I always ask myself, right, what did this woman do to contribute to this situation? It might sound like you're blaming the victim, whatever, that's your business, okay? What did you do to contribute to you ending up with an asshole, okay? What did you do to contribute to you ending up with the devil. <laughs> so obviously, you were dining with the devil and then you drank his poison. That's the truth. You were dining with the devil and then you drank his poison. So how did you end up in that situation? How did you end up with such a man? Now, I'm not excusing the man. I'm not saying that, oh, what the man is doing, he, he cannot help himself. No, I'm just, I know that he's a bad person, okay? I'm not saying you are the one that made him a bad person. I'm saying, what were the things that you did or did not do that made you end up with such a man? The same way when you end up with a good man, what are the things that you did or did not do that made you end up with a good man, right? So it's not as random as we try to make it. So some people that end up with bad men, they did not look at the red flags. Many of them were doing love. Many of them were confused. Many of them were listening to bad advice. Many of them 
we are insecure. Many of them had not yet, you know, um, worked on themselves before they ended up with, with such men. Many of them were not smart enough. You know, they were, when I mean smart, I'm not saying that they're dumb people. I'm just saying that they did not, they, they, they suspended their brain because of man, okay? Many of them suspended their brain and were going with their hearts and stuff like that. Many of them saw the signs. Many of them saw the signs. I keep saying this. When people say, oh, I did not know. I'm like, you knew. You saw the signs. What you tell me is that you did not recognize those things as signs. But whether, whether the guy showed his true colors or not is not debatable. He, of course, showed his true colors in, in a way, okay? He may not show it to the fullest, though. It's after you now marry him that he will not show it to the fullest, right? But people cannot pretend to the extent where you will, not, you will have no clue of who they are. It's not possible. Like, human nature is not, um, um, what is the name? We're not that advanced in, in, as humans, okay? We're not that advanced as humans to be able to mutate ourselves in, in such a way that, or hide ourselves in such a way that nobody would, would, would clock us in any way. No. If you spend more than two hours talking to somebody, right? That's if you spend time talking with the person, you will have a sense. There's that acute thing in your brain that tells you who they are, but a lot of us are not even sensitive to that. A lot of us... It enters this ear and comes out from this ear. A lot of us, we dismiss it. We see it as, nah, I'm just being dramatic. It's not that bad. We see it as, eh, but I have a friend. Like, my friend's husband is this way, but he's such a sweet person, right? My friend's husband has done this, but he's so, he's so lovely to her. Meanwhile, you don't know that behind the closed doors or behind closed doors, behind closed doors, your friend is really going through it. You don't know, right? So... When people say, oh, they, know, they didn't see the signs, I'm like, no, you saw the signs. The only thing is that you, you either dismissed it or you didn't have competent people around you or good friends around you that would have shown you and told you that this thing is actually a red flag, okay? And that's why it's good to surround. And again, it's still part of that internal locus of control. It's still part of your, your doing that you ended up with friends that are like that, okay? So if you have friends that are not... That's insightful when it comes to relationships or you have friends who are men apologetics, okay? Or you have friends who are men haters. They are, they are, both, they are both sides of the same coin, you know? There are women who, they hate men to the, to the max, like all they, they claim to hate men to the max, okay? Until they get married in your presence. But yeah, there are women who claim to hate men, like everything about men are this, men are scum, men are terrible, I can never do something for a man, I can never do that for a man, I can never, as in they always, they are always like, ah, hey, never, me, never, God forbid that I, that I, I, I greet a man, God forbid that I, I collect a man's gift, God forbid that I, I let a man pay for me, God forbid, they are always like that. Then, on the other, way, the other way around, you have women who, everything about their life is about man. Like, my husband, my boyfriend, oh, he saw this. They excuse every stupid behavior that their husband or their boyfriends have. They excuse it. They blame themselves for everything that the guy does. They, you know, they make it look as if the man is so perfect and they're the ones that are not understanding enough or they're not friendly enough or they're not nice enough or they were too stubborn or they were too, everything is about, you know, Everything about their life is about how their husbands are there to like, or, their, or the men in their lives are there to, you know, are, are basically all-knowing, okay? You are married to a, a, a assistant god, you know? <laughs> you are married, I, I told you this thing yesterday when she sent me one video of somebody that was talking about, you know, she can't take permission from her husband. I mean, if her husband tells her not to go out, she will just sit down and remove her gilly and all of that. And I was like, sometimes we make this man sound like we're married to assistant god, like vice god, hmm? Deputy god, like... No, no, I'm not saying that if your husband tells you to not to do something that you should defy him, you know, immediately. No, but I'm saying that there are two sides to that coin. Like, I shouldn't disobey my husband, but he shouldn't command me either, okay? So if my husband, for instance, doesn't want me to travel, he should be able to talk to me in a calm, understanding way and explain to me like a normal human being why he doesn't want me to travel. And me, in turn, being an understanding person as well, I should understand where he's coming from and, you know, choose choose to, you know, go with what he says and not travel. But my husband will say, hey, come back here. You're not going out today. And me, I'm not be like, okay, yes, sir, I'm not going out today. Why? <laughs> Why? Why should marriage be like that? Why should your life be like that? Why should your relationship be like that? Okay, so, yeah, I was saying something else before I digress. When you have these two types of friends, be very careful because they will lead you the wrong way. The, the ones that hate men will make you 
you know, lose your husband, okay? They will make you, <laughs> they will make you chase your husband away. Why the men apologies, on the other hand, will make you end up with controlling and domineering men because you will attract controlling and domineering men when you are controllable and, and dominatable, okay? <laughs> That is the truth. You act like you're one of those very nice girls. You're very humble. See, yeah, this humility thing, uh, they use humility to really disturb many people, to destroy many people. You're acting like you're so humble, like you're not the kind of person that you don't complain, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't like, you like to, you're very hardworking, you don't complain, you're very obedient, you're very, you know, uh, what's the name, what's the word now? You're very submissive, you know what Nigerians call submission, yes. You're very submissive, you're very agreeable. You know, you're such a nice girl. You know how they describe girls as nice girls? You're such a nice girl. Be very careful if that is the way you present yourself, okay? Even if that's how you are. Be careful though, because you will attract, you tend to attract men who are looking for women to dominate. You tend to attract men who are looking for women to subdue, who are looking for puppets, looking for, you know, women that they will keep at home and be doing nonsense and the woman will not say pim. She will not say pim, let her talk now, talk now, let the man wire you slap, you know? That kind of person, if you... If you're that kind of person, again, I'm not saying you should change yourself, but be, be, be aware of the dangers of being that way and be careful who you, who you end up with because of it, right? Someone like me, if I look at my personality, I'm not a very disagreeable person. You know, I like to be nice to people. I like to, you know, not basically butt heads with people. I don't like butting heads. I don't like conversation. I don't like, like, if I, if I can help somebody, I'll help them. If I can be nice, I'll be nice. Like, I don't... I put it, I'm not the kind of person that will look for opportunity to be, you know, rowdy or rude or that kind of thing to anybody, right? That's my natural personality. But because of it, eh, let me tell you guys something. Because of it, the way I am with men is not the way I am generally. I mean, the way I was with the men that were asking me out, that wanted to marry me, that wanted to, you know, have something to do with me, it was almost like... Not opposite per se of my personality, but I wasn't as nice to them. Like, I've never been a nice girl to men, right? <laughs> I'm more nice to women. I'm more nice to people I don't have anything to do with. I'm more nice to just random people. Like, if I'm, if I'm very close to a guy, right? If I'm very cl close to a guy or I'm very cordial with a guy and I like that guy, like, you know that I like this guy, right? Just know that there is no romantic relationship between me and that guy. I don't know if you guys can relate. I know that some girls like that, that the guys that we actually do not want to have anything romantic to, to, to do with, they are the guys that we are the nicest to, right? But the ones that want to have something to do with, they are the ones that I used to be very, 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 like, strict with, right? Because, I mean, even with my husband now, I, I always say that my husband, that I don't like competition does not reach where my husband did, so, you know, reach where my husband did, like... If, if, if there's anything to confront, I'm going to confront it, okay? Because he's my husband. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with him. I want things to work out for us. I want to be happy in my marriage. I want him to be happy as well. I want us to raise good children. I want us to have a, 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 a nice home. I want us to have a happy home, okay? So if, if, if somebody outside there offends me or, you know, does something bad to me or does something I don't like, I might not even say it. Like, you might not even know. I might be friends with you for years and you will not know, okay? I internalize things a lot that I can just internalize it, give excuses for you, squash it and move on, right? But when it comes to my husband, yeah, oh God, you must know. You must, you must know and, and know, know soon enough. <laughs> yeah, not only will you know, you are going to know it Soon enough, like, I, I won't even give you a chance to not know what is going on. <clears throat> you're going to know what is going on, and you're going to deal with it, okay? And I, was like that, and I was like that when I was dating. When I was dating, all the people that I was dating or had some kind of, you know, more than just platonic friend relationship with, I was very, you know, I didn't want to say strict. I was very straightforward with them. Like, if you mess up, I tell you. Like, if I, if, I, if I do something wrong, I tell you. If I don't like what I'm doing, I'm going to tell you. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to tell you on the spot I don't like what you're doing, right? But on the flip side, all my male friends, because I had a lot of male friends, okay? I don't know. I've, I've always had a lot of male friends, even though now I don't really have a game. But when I was growing up, I had a lot of male friends. On the flip side, all my normal male friends, I was the nicest girl to them. <laughs> 
is what it is because I know who I am on a normal day and I know that I'm someone that doesn't like disagreement. So because I don't want, I don't like disagreement, I had to be sure that I was choosing a guy that I will not disagree with so much, okay? That's it. I had to make sure of that. I do not follow love or emotions or how he makes me feel. No. I had to choose somebody that I know that this person aligns with me, both spiritually, mentally, you know, intelligence-wise, outlook on life-wise, you know, he, we align in a lot of ways than not, okay? In the ways that we don't align, we don't align. I don't think we'll ever align in those ways, you know, but there are, there are ways that we can actually deal with. We can actually work through such things. But the ways in which we align, those are ways that, you know, make our life sweet, make our life, you know, heavenly. So, yeah. Back to the original topic of whether things are within your control or not within your control and taking charge of your life. I don't want to go to this life feeling like a victim, feeling like things only happen to me, like I don't have any control. That's the easiest way to get depressed. That's the easiest way to get, you know, sad and feel like, you know, the world is against you. Everything is crashing on your head. Like, oh, you will not be grateful for so many things. You will not see even the good in your life because you feel like everything bad is happening to you. That's why I always reject that victim mentality of, oh, because you're a woman, you know, you are somehow inherently I'm not inherently disadvantaged because I'm a woman, okay? There are some societal things that I'm disadvantaged in, but so do men, okay? Or so are men. There are some societal things that men are disadvantaged in, okay? So everybody just focus on your focus, focus on what is, focus on your, on your strengths, on what you can do to control your life, focus on the things within your control, leave the rest to God, pray about the rest, leave the rest to God, okay? But at the same time, also, Watch and pray, okay? Watch and pray. So not just pray and still be moving, moving through life without having sense, okay? Still be watchful, you know, be mindful, you know, be, be sensible, educate yourself. Anything you need to do to get to where you want to get to, then do it, okay? If it's lack of education that is your problem, if, um, you know, it's lack of exposure, lack of education, you are now an adult, you now have it within your control to do some of those things yourself. If it's lack of finances, you can work and make money, you can, you can, you can get money some way or the other, right? By, you know, working hard, by signing up for opportunities where money is given freely, scholarships and things like that. Okay, so... I'm not saying that we don't have excuses in life. Let your excuse not be things that you can actually control. Let your excuse in life not be things that, obviously, you cost for yourself, right? When you look at society or people who have that victim mentality, you will see that, you know, like, like black Americans or even people around our lives that we know, right? That have that victim mentality, oh, people don't like me because I'm tall or because I'm short or because I'm black or because I'm white or because I'm this. If you know someone like that or because I'm the last born or because I'm the first born or because I'm the... If you, see, if you know people like that, right? Things don't really go well for them, generally. Things don't really go well for them because they always have something to complain about. They are always, you know, lamenting. They always feel like the world is against them. They always feel like everybody else is doing better than them. Everybody who is rich, in quotes, doesn't need anything. They don't need, they don't need, any, they don't need anything. They're just, they're just rich and enjoying their lives while you are miserable. Like, you feel like they don't have things that they're miserable about. They don't have things to do with money. They don't have things to be worried about. They don't have things that, you know, are pressing to them. You feel like they are just lounging and, you know, wasting money and they're doing anyhow. Meanwhile, you, you are suffering. Meanwhile, that's not the truth. That's not how it works. Okay, so, you know, yeah, basically, I don't know what I'm talking about at this point again. I don't tire. <laughs> but yeah, that's my final look. I hope I look pretty. I feel like I look very pretty. I look like an African queen that I am, okay? Yeah, that's the final look. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.